hiding place. Uh, God invites us into a secret hiding place, and we have access to go there. And it's important for us to realize that uh, the devil doesn't like us. We have enemies. We have enemies of uh, our carnal mind, of the world, of uh, Satan and uh, the demons. We have many different enemies, and we need a place where we can hide. And uh, there is a secret place in the supernatural realm where we can hide from uh, the enemies. Now, they may be able to see you, but they can't reach you. They can't touch you. They can't harm you in that place if we are in that place. It, and we need to remind ourselves and remember that uh, we have this secret place. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 3, uh, says that we are dead and we are hidden mm. with Christ in God. Amen. Now that's that is a remarkable scripture, and that's the one that's going to be the core for, for what we're talking about tonight. We are dead. We are hidden with Christ in God. And Amen. so, if the devil wants to get to you, he's got to go through God. And then he has to go through Jesus Christ. And that's going to be a hard a hard thing for him to do because he can't go over the bloodline. Amen. And the blood of Jesus. And so we have a hiding place. But uh, it's easy to get out of the hiding place. And so that's the reason for this message to, tonight is for us to remember that we do have a hiding place and we need to stay in that hiding place so that we cannot be harmed uh, by... Uh, the forces, uh, the enemies that would like to come against us. And and so it, it's always good to remind, to stir up our memory, our pure memory of where we are, of where uh, Jesus Christ has made it possible for us to go, because it is in the supernatural realm. And there are things that pull us out of the supernatural realm. When we think about worldly people, uh, mm -hmm. we think about worldly people, they are going to be doing worldly things. And when we think about carnal people, they are going to be doing carnal things. None of that is spiritual. So when we're putting our focus on what worldly people are doing, we're listening to the news and seeing wars mm -hmm. and rumors of wars and, and government and bad government and this and that and the other one, we're seeing those, uh, that's all worldly. And when we put our mind on worldly thing, it's going to take us out of the supernatural realm. It's going to draw that spiritual life out of us. And when we're thinking about carnal people, and that may be our family, that might be uh, loved ones, mm -hmm. but carnal people will do carnal things. And, that, that, and we have to remember, carnal people will be doing carnal things, and they'll be saying things that will hurt us. They'll be uh, doing things that are not truthful, that are, are not right. So they're going to be doing things. And if we focus on what people are doing, it's going to bring us into the carnal realm. Mm -hmm. It's going to take us into the carnal realm. It's going to take us away from the spiritual and the supernatural realm. It says you who are spiritual. We have to remember we are spiritual. You are spiritual, but it's easy to fall out of the spiritual and supernatural realm when we're looking at people and what people are doing, and we're not looking at God and what God is doing. Mm -hmm. We're told in Hebrews to keep our eyes on Jesus. on Jesus. And so when we're looking at our family and thinking about what all the problems that our family are in and what they're doing, and we're thinking about our coworkers, and we're thinking about our government, we're, we're getting our eyes off of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. And that's going to take us out of that hiding place. Oh. We do have a hiding place oh, with Christ. Hallelujah. You, you know, Christ Christ is not focused on all of this uh, mess that we encounter. Uh, he, he is in heavenly places. He's at peace. Mm -hmm. He was in peace in, even when he was in the world. He overcame the world. And, and, and he tells us uh, that we are overcomers because he has overcome the world. We, we can, can overcome, overcome the world. world. So we have to be looking to Jesus. And that's that's a real secret and a real key about staying in the supernatural realm, in the 
secret place of the Most High God. We want to stay in that secret place where we're hidden away from our enemies. Now, we know from Hebrews 10, verses 19 and 20, that uh, we have access to that secret holy place, and we have access by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so in this study tonight, in this message, we're just going to be focusing on that secret place and reminding ourselves to stay in, in that secret, secret place. place. And in that place, see, we can stay at rest. And that's one of our resolutions for the year is to stay at rest and help one another stay, stay at, at rest. rest. Amen. And so where is that rest? It's in that secret place where the enemies cannot touch us. They may be able to see us, but they cannot touch us there. Hallelujah. They cannot go over the bloodline. And so that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. And I said the core of the message is Colossians 3.3, 3, that we are hidden with Christ in God when we are dead. Uh, that doesn't mean when we go to heaven. It means that we crucify the flesh. You've got to lay down our life and pick up the cross. That's what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. If we're going to be a disciple of Jesus, he said this in Matthew 16, then we've got to lay down our life and pick up his life. He has the higher life, and we have to take up our cross. And that's when we're dead, when we lay down our life. Also, Romans 12, uh, verses 1 and 2, it says, put your body as a living, living sacrifice. sacrifice on the altar of God. Now, the real scriptures uh, that I want to focus on here are in Psalm 91. And I want Cherry to read this, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. And I want to give you a testimony directly related to Psalm 91, and we're just going to go over the first seven verses, and I'll, this tells us really there is a place that we can go where we will be in a secret place, where that we will be sheltered, where the Lord is our refuge and our safety, okay, so read Hallelujah. these first seven verses here. I will, uh, but before <laughs> I read, I just want to welcome uh, everyone tonight, and and say it's great to see your faces and we've got some new ones and and um we just uh we thank the lord for all of you and uh and so now i will read okay in psalms 91 in verse uh, it says one who dwells in the shelter of the most high will lodge in the shadow of the almighty i will say to the lord my refuge and my fortress my God in whom I trust. For it is he who rescues you from the net of the trapper and from the deadly plague. He will cover you with his uh, pinions or his feathers and under his wings you may take refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a wall. You will not be afraid of the terror by night or of the arrow that flies by day of the plague that stalks in the darkness or of the destruction that devastates at noon. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not approach you. Hallelujah to Jesus. Okay, so a couple of things I want to point out from this is that this is about being in the presence of God. It's yeah. being under the shadow of the most high God. And that's where we have refuge. So it's in his presence. If if he, you're close enough to him that his shadow is over you, mm -hmm. then you are in his presence. Oh, that's so good. this that's message good. is about being in the presence of God. And I want to, this, this whole uh, chapter is really alive to me. It was revealed to me over 30 years ago and, and uh that I knew it was mine, that it belonged to me. And so I began to meditate on it. Uh, and, and then in a few days, I flew to Washington, D.C. And I was up there for several days for a meeting. Uh, but the real story begins as I'm on my way back. And this is over 30 mm -hmm. years ago. And uh, I, I, we heard there was a big ice storm coming across the eastern United States. And uh, we tried to rush to get back to the airport to get to our plane. So I believe uh, my plane was supposed to leave like 1.30. 
And just about then the ice storm hit. And uh, so I set out on the runway and I was on uh, what was then national, uh, the national uh, airport. And now I believe it's the Reagan uh, airport, uh, Ronald Reagan airport in uh, Washington, DC. Um, but so here I am on the uh, runway waiting for a break in the ice storm. It was a terrible storm. Uh, just the wind was blowing the plane. We were all loaded in the plane, ready to go. Uh, my plane was number one on the runway, just waiting for a break in the ice. And uh, they were constantly spraying us with chemicals so that we would uh, not have uh, ice accumulating on the wings and on the, on the plane. And we sat out there for, uh, I would say, um, two and a half hours. To, I believe it was four o'clock. At four o'clock, uh, we were all frightened. It, it was a frightening experience <coughs> to be sitting out on the runway of that airport uh, waiting for a break uh, in the storm. And so the storm had hit, and we were trying to get off before it hit, but it hit. And so there we were, and, and they wouldn't let us go back to the terminal. We were out on the runway, number one, ready to go as soon as there was a break. And then they said, okay, there's a break. And, uh, but what happened before that is I was meditating on this passage. Mm -hmm. And the verse that I focused on primarily was the seventh verse. And it says, a thousand may fall by my side and 10,000 by my right hand but it will not come near me. I, this passage became alive to me and I meditated on it for all of that time. I was out there on the runway waiting for a break in the storm. And I kept repeating over and over again, just under my breath, because there, the plane was full of passengers and uh, the people next to me said, oh, they were frightened. Uh, even the thoughts of taking off in that storm. And my only response was a thousand may fall oh, by my side, side. 10,000 by my right hand, but it will not come near me because Amen. God had spoken that and revealed that passage to me just days earlier, just a few days earlier, right before I took that trip. So I was meditating on it. I, it was alive to me. And that's what I, I was holding on to while other people were crossing their fingers and hoping we would get off. <laughs> uh, I, I was saying a thousand may I fall by my side, side. 10,000 by my right hand, but it will not come near me. I call this testimony the day the planes it's would not fly, fly. Uh, because it was a storm and they, uh, with ice and they just couldn't uh, fly that day. And uh, then about four o'clock, as I remember, they, they released our plane. We were number one on the runway. And uh, we flew down that runway and, and took off. And we came back to Atlanta. But the number two plane on the runway was a Florida airline. And it ran down. It was the number two in the, in the takeoff. And it went down the runway and it couldn't fly. And it went into the, the Potomac, Potomac, into the Potomac River. And there were over 80 people killed. Uh, see, that was the day that the planes. planes could not fly. They should not have flown. They should not have released our plane. But our plane Fine. flew because God gave his angels charge, charge over, over my plane and lifted it up. See, it's about the about the wings and the wings of God. That, you look at Isaiah, I mean, at Psalm 91, it was the wings of God and lifting us up and uh, that we would not... Uh, be harmed and so that's where my faith was and i don't know if there was anybody else on my plane that was quoting psalm 91 on that day but i was quoting it i was believing that i was in a secret place that i had protection of god and that he would give his angels charge over me and the next plane uh went into the potomac so we flew when the another plane couldn't fly mm -hmm. uh, there was no difference in the two planes they, we were both on the same runway. We were both headed the same way uh, to, to take off. And they had been spraying chemicals on us and they'd been spraying chemicals on uh, that Florida Airlines, but it could not fly. 
And I tell you of a certainty that my plane would not have flown had the angels of God not uh, to taken it up and picked it up and carried it on their shoulders and brought us safely uh, to Atlanta. Hallelujah. Now, just a, a footnote to the uh, to the to that story was once I got to Atlanta, there was no place to go. I couldn't come to Athens. I, I was stuck. In Atlanta, uh, because everything was iced over, and, and, and there was no place for me to go. And, and so what I want you to know is you don't just automatically get into this secret place. You have to believe mm -hmm. God, and you have to be a spiritual person with your mind on Jesus, on Jesus focused on him, and you will be in that secret place. Now, the core message is that Colossians 3.3, 3, we are hidden with Christ in God. And I want to talk about where is this secret place? And I'll tell you that it is the heart of God. The secret mm -hmm. hiding place is the heart of God. And so I want mm -hmm. to talk about the heart of God. What is in the heart of God? Well, it, it shows what his desires are, what his will is what he wants to do, what he wants mm -hmm. to accomplish, that's in his heart. When you get into the heart of God and find out what's in the heart of God, that's where this secret place is. Now, how can we find out what is in the heart of God? Well, we look at his word. The word of God will tell us what is in his heart. You, you look from Genesis to Revelation and you will begin to understand and the Holy Spirit will reveal the word to you and you will know what is in his heart. So th that's the way to find what's in his heart because when you know his heart, you can stay in that secret place where no enemy can harm you. And, and I, I want all of you to be at peace and you be able to lay down at night and rest. And, you know, that's what that Psalm 91 was talking mm -hmm. about, that, that there's not going to be terror by night. That's there's not right. going to be that's terror right. by day. Uh, and so we need to know that we are in the secret place. Hallelujah. That God has provided for us a secret place where we can hide. So the first way you can find out uh, the heart of God and what's in the heart of God is by looking at his word. Because uh, it says that he breathed his scriptures. His, his scriptures came by his breath. So the breath of God produced the scriptures. And so they reveal uh, the God to us and reveal his heart. Example. I don't and, have this. Well, and, and a, good, a good example of that is about God is love. Mm -hmm. And God is good. And so when we know by our, in our heart and we're settled that God is good and he's going to be good to me and he's going to be good to you, then we're beginning to rest in that in his heart because that is the heart of God, that he is love. Mm -hmm. Now, see, if, if, we're, uh, if we don't know, if we're uh, going back and forth and say, well, we don't know whether God is good or or the devil is good. I mean, we need to know these things. We need to get settled in our heart that God is good and the devil is evil. Amen. And God does good and he always does good. And so by his word, that's what we find out. Another way that we can find the heart of God is to look at the life of Jesus because Jesus is the image of the father. And if Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. And so you look at his life and you'll know the father, you'll know how he operates. And so thinking about Jesus, he's the image. He, the Hebrew says he's the express image of the father. So we can know the heart of God by looking at the word of God and re studying it and having it revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. And we can know the heart of God by looking at the life of Jesus. Now, there are three things I want to talk about that are in the heart of God uh, that, that relate to this message. <clears throat> so when we see the heart of God and are in the heart of God, the first thing that we're going to do there is encounter the cross. 
the cross of Jesus Christ, mm. where he died and bled and, and uh, he laid down his life, that cross. And so that's what's, that <clears throat> is a very important thing. That's what we're going to encounter when we're in the heart of God. And, you know, uh, Paul wrote in Philippians 3.10 uh, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering that I might be conformed to his death. And so that's, that's the way to know the cross is to know the power of his resurrection Amen. and the fellowship and fellowship then with his suffering that, that you're uh, that you're united with Jesus Christ and you died, you were, uh, you died on the cross and you were buried with him and you were raised with mm -hmm. him. You need mm -hmm. to see yourself as a part of the cross and of everything that happened mm -hmm. on the cross. You know, I've seen people in heaven and I've seen things in heaven. And one time I, I, I saw heaven. Uh, I, it was just opened up to me for just seconds, but I saw, and what I saw in heaven was they were that the angels and the multitudes of people in heaven were worshiping and celebrating Jesus, celebrating the resurrection of the cross from the cross. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and in my natural mind thought, well, that was thousands of years ago. That's over 2000 years ago, but it's still so alive mm -hmm. in heaven, in the hearts of the angels and of the and of the people of the saints in heaven, it's still alive and it's so vivid and so uh, uh, it's going on now. They're celebrating his resurrection. Oh, yeah. Glory to God. It's not something that they forget after a year or two of worshiping mm -hmm. him. No, it'll go on forever. For we eternity. will always, it will always be fresh in our thinking, fresh in our heart that Jesus Christ went to the cross and died for you and me. Glory to Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. So we're going to encounter the cross when we're in heaven and it's going to touch us and it's going, we're going to know more about the cross when we're in heaven. It, it <clears throat> It's not some old event. It, it's life. It's life. It gives us life. The power of the cross. Glory to God. It talks mm -hmm. about the preaching of the cross is the power, power of God. Yes. And that means it's going to be going on throughout eternity about the cross and about the celebration. Uh, you know, Jesus had this great celebration. Well, we're just continuing on in this celebration when he came up out of the cross, out of the <clears throat> grave. And he was resurrected from the grave. So that's going to be a continuing on uh ongoing theme in heaven uh, mm -hmm. celebrating the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's not some old event that happened a long time ago and that we can forget it now. No, it, it's something that needs to continually be mm -hmm. uh, in our fourth uh, thinking and our forethoughts and, and, and that we're celebrating his resurrection and victory over death, hell, and the grave. Hallelujah. Uh, so when we're in the cross, when we're in that secret place, we're going to encounter the cross and it's going to impact us. It's going to touch our lives. It's going to impact us. The second thing I want to say, there's three things I want to talk about that we will encounter in the heart of God. God. And that, and that the first one is the cross. The second one is that Jesus is the one, oh, glory to God, that purchased the hidden treasure. He, he looked, mm -hmm. Jesus was mm -hmm. looking for a treasure. You know, um, Matthew 13, verses 44 through 46 said that the kingdom of heaven is like a man that was looking for a treasure. He found a treasure in the field and he went and sold everything he had and, and, uh, and he bought that field mm -hmm. he, he didn't just buy the uh, the treasure he bought everything he bought the field and everything in it and he sold he gave the full price for it he gave the full price he, he didn't skimp and, and and just pay a little bit of he gave everything he paid the full price 
for that field. So he bought it. Jesus is the one uh, who bought it. And it said, the um, next two verses, 45 and 46, said that he found a pearl, a pearl of great, great price. price. And I want you to know that you are that pearl and you've been bought. And, yes, and so, amen, amen. Uh, and, and uh, 1 Corinthians 6.20 says, we've been bought. We've been bought by a price. Mm -hmm. And that price was the, the blood, blood of, of Jesus. Jesus. And so we have access to that secret place because we've been bought by the precious Hallelujah. blood Hallelujah. of Jesus Christ. And, and uh, so that's the second thing. The first thing was that in the heart, we're going to encounter the heart of God. We're going to encounter the cross. And number two, we're going to see that Jesus purchased us. And number three, in, in order for you to be in the heart of God, you have to realize that you are that pearl of great price. It's your value. And I want to talk about in the heart of God, you will see that you are have a great value. And, and I want to talk about value for a minute. You know, we might uh, build a house, let's say a few years ago for $100,000 and Today, maybe it could be sold for a million dollars. Okay, so what's the value of it? Well, it's not what it costs to build it. And it it's cost what people are willing to pay for it. And that's, uh, let's say, a million dollars for that house. So the way you determine value is what people are willing to pay for it. And so you have to think about yourself for a moment. In in the heart of God, you're going to find out that you have great value, that you are the pearl of great price, of a pearl of great price. And how, how was your value determined? Your value was not determined by the devil. And the devil may say, well, you've got flaws and you've got, you're fragile and, and you've got all of this uh, baggage that you're uh, that's happened in the past. See, the devil might give you all kinds of thoughts like that, but no, that's not your value. And, and you might think, well, I, I uh, look at myself and I could put a value on myself and I probably wouldn't put a very high price on it, but no, that's not your value. Your value is what Jesus was willing to give for you, mm, what he wow. was willing to pay for you. Your value is not what the devil says about you. Mm -hmm. Your value is not what you say about yourself. Your value is what Jesus paid for you. He paid the Hallelujah. precious blood, his precious blood. He shed it off. And there in uh, Matthew 13, he says he paid the full, full price. He paid it all. He, he sold everything he had, everything he had. So your value, it talks about one pearl, and that's you. It's not talking about somebody else. It's talking about you, a pearl of great price. And that price, the value of it is what Jesus paid for you, and that was everything. He gave his life, he shed his blood, he, he laid his life down for you. That great, that pearl of great price is you. Mm -hmm. And for you to stay in the heart of God where you are protected, then you have to realize that you are that pearl of great price, Hallelujah. that you are valuable. And your value is not determined by what the world says about you. You, may, you know, you might look and think about your salary, how much salary you could earn over a lifetime. Or you might think uh, uh, about the mistakes you've made and might think about any of those things. But the only way you can stay in the heart of God is to know that you are that pearl of great price and that he paid the, that price for you. And if you see yourself any other way, you're not going to be in that secret place mm. of safety, uh, not in that secret mm. place of safety. I want all of you to realize that the reason you're in the heart of God is because you are so valuable, so valuable that Jesus would pay it all just for you. And when you see yourself the way God sees you, then you know 
that you can stay in that secret place where you are protected. So, so you don't have to wonder, well, today, am I going to be here or am I going to be there and, and, and not know where you really are? Your place is to be seated in heavenly places, uh, and you have access to that. Remember from Hebrews 10, mm -hmm. we have access by the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. And the only way you'll stay and rest there in that place of protection is if you know that Jesus Christ prayed, paid such a price for you, a great price. So I want you to remember these three points, that for us to be in the heart of God, in that secret place where we're fully protected from all enemies, all harm, all attacks of the enemy, that we have to remember these three things, or that we have to encounter the heart of the cross in the heart of God, that we have to recognize that it was Jesus that paid the price for us, and that we are valuable. You are valuable. For you to stay uh, fully there in that secret place, that you have to know that you are valuable because you have been bought with a price. You are not your own. Jesus paid it all for Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. Thank you for being here today. Yeah, I'm going to turn it Jesus. over to Sherry. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I think about several things uh, as Brother Fred was, was ministering the word to us that uh, he said something about uh, that we needed to know the word. We needed to know in order to stay in that secret place. And I just had this uh, come up in my spirit that there are people, uh, I've gotten calls recently uh, from uh, three different individuals uh, concerning uh, their, their healing in their body. And, and I want you to know that in, in 3 John verse 2, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. The Lord wants you to receive your healing tonight. 